In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the different ways that we can declare pointer variables in C. So first, let's declare an int variable called num, and we'll assign num the value 5. We can declare a pointer variable with int star p1. This here would be a pointer to an int, and we could assign the memory address of num to p1. So we could say p1 is equal to and num. So right now, p1 stores the memory address of the variable num. We could then dereference p1 to access the value that p1 points to. So we could say printf star p1 colon percent d backslash n, and we'll have star p1 here. If we save, compile, and run this, we'll get that p1 points to the value 5. So this here is one way that we can declare the pointer variable int the type, space, then star, then the variable name. But this will also work. I could say int star p2 with the space here. This will also work. So I could say p2 is equal to and num. So now p2 also stores the memory address of the num variable. Then down here, we could dereference p2. So we'll have p2 here instead and star p2 here. And if we save, compile, and run this, we get that p2 points to the value 5 as well. So this way also works. We could also have this int space star space p3. And then here I could say p3 is equal to in num. And then down here I could print out p3. And this will also work. So we'll have p3 and p3. And if we save, compile, and run it, we get that p3 points to the value 5 as well. So all of these approaches will allow us to declare a pointer to an int. Of these three approaches, some people might say that this approach here is the clearest because it really expresses the type of the variable that we're declaring altogether. We have the star right next to the int, and it's a pointer to an int. This approach here tends to be the most confusing, and that's very seldom used. But oftentimes, we'll see this first approach here used. Why is that? So to understand why it's used, let's try to declare multiple pointer variables with the same statement. So here we'll have p1, p2. And we'll delete this statement here. We'll also delete this here and this here because we no longer have p3. So right now, it looks like we should be declaring two pointers to an int. If we save compile and run the program. We're going to get an error here though. It says indirection requires pointer operand. So basically the compiler is telling us that P2 is not a pointer. We could actually investigate this. Let's actually print out the size in bytes for a pointer to an int, as well as the size in bytes for an int. And then we'll compare that to the size in bytes for P1 and P2. So here we'll have printf size of and int colon percent d backslash n and we'll output the size of an int in bytes. We'll also print out the size of a pointer to an int in bytes with this statement here. So we'll have size of int star here. Then we'll print out the size of p1 and p2. So we'll have printf size of p1 colon percent d backslash n and we'll output the size of p1. Then we'll do the same thing with p2. So printf size of p2 colon percent d backslash n size of p2. And let's comment out this line here, just so it compiles. So we'll save, compile, and run the program. And look at this. The size of an int is 4 bytes. The size of a pointer to an int is 8 bytes. The size of p1 is 8 bytes. So p1 is a pointer to an int. That's why we can use it here like this. But p2 has the size 4 bytes. P2 is actually an int. It's not a pointer to an int. That's why we get this compilation error when we try to use it like a pointer and dereference it. So what's really happening here is that because this star is here, P1 is being declared as a pointer to an int, but P2 is being declared as an int. If we wanted to declare P2 as a pointer to an int, we would have to put a star over here like this. If we now save, compile, and run it, it's going to work. And P2 
does again point to the value 5. Now we could put the star here, save, compile, and run it, and this will also work. But it seems to make more sense to have the star next to each variable name. So that's the approach you tend to see used in practice because it makes it clear that both of these variables are a pointer to an end. Now because of this potential for confusion, we may actually want to limit our variable declarations to one variable per line like this, int star p1 or int star p2. Now the reason why I wanted to make this video is that this approach here could be confusing if you're not familiar with how pointer variable declarations work. When we declare multiple variables with a single statement, you might think that this approach will lead to all variables being declared as pointer variables, but that's not the case. These variables here would not be pointer variables and treating them like pointer variables would lead to bugs in your program. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.